Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Sportsman's Warehouse and the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. And Gene Smith is sitting here. He might spout off a pun without me knowing it. He's already stunned the audience out there by saying that Both of them. he was born in a hospital because he wanted to be near his mother. That really got me uh, the thinking right there. That's a true story. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's a true story, too. Uh, uh, you recognize that laugh on the other end of the line because that's our, that's our a very special friend is Ron Wong. And, uh, Ron, I know last weekend you were back and forth. I, uh, I, I had enjoyed my time at Seopa. You were back and forth making some pictures. We've already posted some, and you've already we've already posted some of the the the, the American Crappie Trail tournament at Grenada. Yeah. I don't know how you knew which place you were back and forth, but this young man we have on the line with us uh, right now accomplished something that I, I don't know. Ron, you've been doing this a long time. Has uh, has anyone ever won it? But I know you won the St. Jude Bass Classic, Ron, one year by yourself. Yeah, it is. I do know that, I Ron. did that twice, yeah. Twice, yeah. All right. Well, talk about Matthew Rogers winning that tournament last weekend by himself well, before Matthew well, comes in. Well, I have in. to tell you something. Yeah. You know, I think as a first time also, Matthew sat down um, and he had – he knocked out – the tenth place team right off. He did when he okay. came to weigh in. Uh-huh. So he had to sit through the other nine Ooh. teams that had oh, to boy. weigh oh, in for the top ten, and ended up blowing the field away. I mean, you know, with his big bag the last day and over thirty-one and pounds. You, it Almost was really 30. amazing. There were so many people out there. Every one of the teams that were there and the audience. Uh, we're so happy for Matthew and I am so to to put up with the conditions that he had to fish on. <laughs> yeah, he's already talked was about it. It's pretty amazing. Matthew, talk about it, uh, <laughs> about this solo deal. Now, I mean, was that, did, did, did your partner get sick or did you just end up by yourself? Uh, I've had a lot of well, people asking us that. What there, happened? There's a, this new technique that's out because, and it's because of the technology Garmin released with the Garmin LiveScope. Um, my the, my buddy that I had that was going to come fish with me, he's a. Uh, I'm not going to be mean. He's an old man, but oh, okay. he here, here. Here. all right. <laughs> well, we, 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 we're all leaving right now, Matthew. That's all right. No, Let me turn ahead. my hearing aid back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but go on. This this new technique, you know is a kind of a one-man show he would have been able to net my fish for me okay but it's really realistically two people fishing like that out of the front Amazing. of the boat yeah. is, is, is really tough this way because it you, you know you, time when you see a fish is really crucial to get on it and catch yeah. it and uh, having somebody there with another rod kind of gets in the way most of the time and you will lose some fish i lost some really really nice fish because i was trying to slip them into the boat um but, but you were you were in the boat by yourself, Ron. Is anybody oh, else yeah. anybody else in that, in that tournament with one person? Yes, there was. There was a uh, two or three teams that was like that. And you know, Larry, but, one of the things we have talked about over the last couple of years in terms of fishing tournaments and how things have evolved. Yeah, the same thing is happening uh, for uh, professional crappie fishing. And that's electronics. And that's Matthew's right. alluding to the Garmin Live Scope that yeah. he's using. Yeah. And Matthew, I want you to kind of tell our listeners what that's all about. How you're doing what you're doing by paying attention to that screen and kind of playing video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it really is similar. And uh, it's funny. I mean, I don't like I don't like video games because I don't like to be in the house. Oh. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Good. I uh, I mean I'm it's 32 degrees and snowing where I'm at and I'm ahead and fishing. <laughs> yeah. But it's a new technology that you can see under the water in real time. Yes. Wow. As to where all the other sonars were history and the way the fish finders interpret them was was in a 2D kind of effect and and now it's 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 still a 2D way. But you can tell the size of the fish. Oh my you can goodness. find which way they're swimming. Yeah. So you can target specifically the 
big fish. And what I and you go ahead. And go ahead. Ron, uh, he targeted big fish because he came in with almost uh, more than thirty-two pounds of fish during that event, and and the elements weren't the greatest, uh, were they, uh, Ron? <laughs> no, it was rainy, windy, cold both days. <laughs> yeah. A big storm came through about 11 o'clock, wasn't it, Matthew, um, on Saturday that it made yeah. people put their boats on their trailer. Yeah. It yeah. was so bad. Yeah. We'll talk about and that. And you stayed out, and you, you roughed the weather. Now, Matthew, tell our listeners, you're going against the best crappie fishermen in the world. Yeah. Uh, here on American Crappie Trail. Uh, what's it like to win against some of these guys? It says a lot. I, I feel like, you know, it lets people know that I, I do fish other trails, and um, I, there's a lot of good fishermen on every trail, and I I feel, you know, I felt like a lot of people kind of thought I was a fluke with uh, I won a classic last last year, last fall, Yeah. and then mm-hmm. I was runner-up in the same trails classic, the Crappie Master Classic on Grenada, actually. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of makes a statement that I'm not a fluke, you know. No. I'm here and I'm forced to reckon with, and I wanna I wanna be a forced reckoning with for uh, years to come. And crappie fishing is growing, for sure. And uh, I think this technology opens the door for maybe younger a younger generation to get into the fishing world, not just bass or not just crappie fishing, but bass fishing as well, even. And uh, I think. Hopefully, me doing what I did shows and opens the door to these kids thinking that go. they can compete as well. And how old yeah. are you, Matthew? I'm I'm 22. 20? Did you hear that, Ron? 22. You know, he's he's younger than the hey, pounds. He's, he's younger than the pounds of fish too. he caught. Yeah, I mean, I uh, got shoes at all. You do, don't you? I mean that. So, uh, <laughs> and 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 being from uh, El Dorado Springs, Missouri, where is that close to? That is in between. Stockton Lake and Truman Lake. Okay, we all know that and everything. So the, this is a boost in your career because I know you want a boat. They're always going to give you a boat. You got some money out of this. So what does this boost as you look forward now, Ron? I, we're coming back to Sardis, what, in uh, March? Or is that right, next year? March for the championship. Yeah, talk about that, uh, Matthew. At 22, uh, what does this do for your career? It opens it certainly opens a lot of doors for sponsors to look at me. Um, I'm kind of the I'm kind of the old fashioned, you know. If I need, I don't really take too many sponsors. I look at I look them over real well. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I, I I I'll work for my money if I absolutely have to to make it to a tournament. That doesn't bother me. But I think it will open the door for uh, more sponsors to look at me and maybe the right ones that uh, I'm willing to get on board with a company that I, you know, believe in their product. And, yeah wanted in other people's hands well and, ron, uh, well, well ron you you look at this young man he's 22 and think about uh he's already told us how old we are we know that now and everything <laughs> uh what do you say yeah no but this uh I, I think matthew's got his head on straight and he knows what he's doing and it's another example of uh of, of getting more people involved in the sport i can hear that from you right Mark? Well, the, and he's doing a great job and setting a great example yeah, yeah. for what you have to do. You have to do a little studying. You have to put time in the water. Yeah. And you have to stay focused. And you have to do the right things. And, uh, you know, when I see Matthew doing those things, uh, you know, we were, he was sitting in the hot seat there as he's <laughs> Yeah. Last couple of teams were weighing in. Yeah. And, you know, he kept telling Jamie Bryant, the the MC there at the American Crawford Trail. Okay, let's get it on. Let's get the rest of the guys weighed in. Let's yeah. move on. And I mean, that's what it's all about. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's and, and and Matthew, I know that there had to be grueling. Uh, it would be for an old timer, but for you, uh, I can see that. Uh, is this something you want to do for for a long time? I can't say a long time. You're 22. I mean, uh, uh, when did you discover that you wanted to be a crappie fisherman? I would say I was 17 years old, and I, I had bought and I sold a race car, of all things. You did? Thank God I sold that race car. <laughs> I sold that race car, and I bought a, a little aluminum boat. Yeah. And it, it just, it, every time I went out, it just fueled the fire. Wow. I, mean, I just, I went as much as I possibly could. Um, 
and from 17 to 22, I've put countless hours in, countless brush piles and structure <laughs> in my home lake there at Truman. And yeah. It paid off big time, and I won that classic, and that really – that just basically gave me enough money I could travel oh, yeah. and fish a little bit. And I picked six tournaments to fish out of the Crappie Masters. I uh, won the Angler Team of the Year fishing on that trail. And then I had a little hiccup in, uh, at Kentucky Lake in the ACT. I finally got a chance to fish one of theirs. And I had ma- I broke a rule, and I, I told the tournament director. And uh, I believe I would have been definitely top three, if not have won the tournament. And uh, I had to tell the tournament director, and I got my first day weight DQ'd, and I, I went ahead and fished the second day. And then uh, I had a vendetta going to Grenada. You know, I really wanted to <laughs> yeah. finish well. I mean, I didn't have to win it. I, I wanted to finish well. So those boys at the ACT knew that I was there to compete. Yes. And uh, well, I I th- hope, hopefully I did a good job at that, and they, they understand that I can I can fish with them. Well, I think you showed a lot of guts uh, at uh yeah, the, true sports to what happened in, in that DQ and uh, life goes on. We wish you nothing but success. And uh, Ron Wong will be following you like he does everybody else. He is a stalker for Outdoors of Larry Ray, <laughs> so watch out. Ron, Ron keeps up with it for him, does a wonderful job. And uh, I know Ron, uh, here's another name to follow, right? So we'll have to keep yes, up with Yes, he is. Um, you know, Matthew's going to be around for a while, and, uh, you know, he's showing these guys. What you have to do, yes. you know, it's just like any any other kind of competitive fishing. You have to stay up with the technology. And he is. If you go and if you don't do that, you're going to fall behind. And you know, and that's going to change too. Yes. And yeah. uh, so you have to have an open mind. I see Matthew is having an open mind yep. and wanting to learn all the time and do the right things. Well, I appreciate both of you guys being with us on this Saturday morning. Matthew, we will stay in touch because we got your phone, okay? So uh, yep. stay in touch with Ron. We'll talk to you uh, next week, okay? All I'll right. be in all studio right. next week. All right, buddy. Both of y'all have a great weekend, all right? See you later. Yeah, you all right. All, do the same. all right. Thank you. All right. All right. Let me tell you about next week's show real quickly because uh, 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 Shelby's kind of looking at me kind of like, get out of here. Okay. All right. No, I, I think mean, she's uh, cute. Hey, Bruce Aiken, the CEO of BASS. We're going to talk about some uh, some big deals that's going on at BASS. We're going to talk to Matt and Angie Morgan uh, of the American Crappie Trail wrap up. And here's one of my favorite things to talk about is frog talks. Y'all know I'm a frog talks man. I've got me some waders. I got me in my rain suit. I got it on uh, with me now. Will Fowler, he's the director of marketing for Frog Togs. Uh, John Devney, our good friend, uh, senior vice president for Delta Waterfowl. And we're going to get some more CWD uh, updates from who who else but Chuck Yost, the TWR, TWRA Deer Program Coordinator. Ron Wong, John Gordon, if John's up to it, uh, health-wise, will be with us as a co-host. Gene Smith. Good morning, evening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Morning, morning. Thank you, buddy, for being yes, here. Do you have any closing thoughts? Well, you know, that's we talk, dangerous to ask. Yeah, I know. you. We talked about our fathers. You, know, you want a, yes. a, a following your father's What's footsteps, yep. your shoes. Uh-huh. Well, my dad wore loafers. Your daddy wore loafers. Okay. So that's why I never went to work. What else can I say? I'm still stuck on uh, being born in the hospital because I wanted to be close to his mother. Okay, and that's a true story. All right. This is Larry Ray reminding you I do each and every week. It doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport. And what else, Gene? God God bless bless the USA. USA.